In pursuit of the ultimate speed thrill, Zeff Eisenberg aimed to rewrite the record books at Elvington Airfield. Armed with what he believed to be the world's fastest Porsche 911 Turbo, he chased the elusive Flying Mile record. But on October 1st, 2020, the quest for speed took a fateful turn. Join us as we unravel the layers of this adrenaline-pumping story, uncovering the mind-boggling details of the life and tragic death of Zeff Eisenberg, a man who lived life in the fast lane like no other. Zeff Eisenberg, an entrepreneur and daredevil, was known for his insatiable thirst for speed. His journey to becoming one of the most prominent figures in the world of land speed records began with a love for motorcycles and an unwavering determination. Born in the UK, Eisenberg was drawn to the thrill of motorsports from an early age. At the age of 15, an idea struck him like lightning. He decided to install an electric motor into a bicycle. To his sheer delight, his experiment worked, and he successfully transformed the ordinary bicycle into an electric-powered marvel. Recognizing the ingenuity of his creation, a big electronics company awarded him a grant, affirming his innovative skills. This achievement ignited a fire within him that would later lead him to remarkable records. At the age of 16, he decided to take up bodybuilding, and just one year later, he could proudly claim the title of Junior Bodybuilding Champion of Great Britain. When he was just 22 years old, he founded the sports nutrition company Maximuscle before selling it to pharmaceutical giant GlaxoSmithKline in 2011 for 162 million pounds. But it wasn't until he set his sights on breaking the motorcycle land speed record that he truly caught the world's attention. As a millionaire, he now had enough free time to follow his first love, speed. He set up the Mad Max race team in 2011 from Guernsey Island. The Mad Max is a specialized engineering team that develops motorbikes, cars, quads, and land speed vehicles. Now, as Eisenberg once said, the human body and a vehicle engine have close similarities. Both require the best care, fuel, and maintenance to perform at their best. He committed himself to showing what could be achieved when you push the limits of both human abilities and machine capabilities in groundbreaking challenges. The self-confessed performance junkie learned his trade with V8 muscle cars and drag motorbikes before creating the world's most powerful turbine motorbike, a monster of a machine, the Mad Max turbine bike. This beast was powered by a helicopter engine generating over 500 horsepower. It was a mechanical marvel designed for one purpose, to break records. After working on it intensely for five years, Eisenberg achieved a significant milestone setting a new Guinness World Record for the fastest turbine bike globally, reaching a speed of 225 miles per hour. But with great power comes great risk. In 2016, during an attempt to break the motorcycle land speed record at the Pendine Sands in Wales, disaster struck. That accident, which saw Eisenberg come off his bike at 234 miles per hour, was described as the fastest motorbike crash in British history. Zeff's Mad Max turbine bike lost control at a staggering speed, leading to a horrifying crash. He was airlifted to the hospital after being presumed dead at the scene. However, Eisenberg was not dead, but he did break 11 bones in the crash, including his pelvis, hip, and femur. He spent three months in the hospital, during which doctors told him that he'd never walk again. That was followed by three months in a wheelchair and six months learning to walk. As of July 2017, Eisenberg said he had 90% recovered. But since then, he continued to defy his critics by rebuilding his bike and attempting and succeeding at reaching ever-increasing speeds. This brush with death only fueled his determination to go even faster. He was a man on a mission, obsessed with pushing the boundaries of what was humanly possible. By September 2017, it seemed that Eisenberg had made a remarkable recovery from his harrowing crash. On the anniversary of that life-altering event, he fearlessly returned to Elvington Airfield in Yorkshire to once again race on the very same bike that had previously catapulted him into danger and left him with life-threatening injuries. This comeback showcased Eisenberg's unwavering determination and resilience, proving that he was not one to be held back by adversity. That was my whole you know, approach. I have to take control of my life. I'm not going to let the accident control me. I'm not going to become one of these scared people that doesn't want to go on a motorbike, a bicycle, anything anymore because of those fears. We're back. Zeph is back. The speed demon continued to put his 2016 crash behind him as he raced towards making his mark in the history books for his record-breaking times in 2018. 
Having set all the world and Guinness records there were to achieve on the Rolls-Royce powered turbine bike, I wanted to set our sights on the Holy Grail, 200 miles per hour plus on sand, he said. And there it was in May 2018. After three years of trying, Eisenberg etched his name in the sands of history by breaking the world land speed record for a motorcycle on sand, hitting an astonishing 201.5 miles per hour. This was a historic moment as no one had ever broken the 200 miles per hour barrier on either a motorbike or car at Pendine Sands before. Asked by the BBC in 2018 about what it felt like to ride such extreme speeds, Eisenberg explained that all you could sense was your heartbeat and feel the adrenaline rushing. You can literally hear the blood pumping through your head. He said reaching these record-breaking speeds is like finding the holy grail. After his success at breaking records on the difficult sand, he adopted Metallica's Enter Sandman as his unofficial anthem in 2018. It's become my little ritual. Before I do the sand racing, we play it at full volume, get into the mood, get into the mindset, and then we go and race. I like the difficult surfaces because they become a challenge. My problem is, when is it enough, Eisenberg said. I want to go further. If you can go 200 miles per hour, why not 210 miles per hour? Eisenberg wasn't likely to rest on his laurels any time soon. He quickly had his eyes set on another race, and he wants to set another record on his fully rebuilt 560 horsepower turbine bike. With our new record of 224.8 miles per hour under our belt, we are excited for the next Big World Sand Record Showdown at Pendine Beach in Wales. Several of Europe's best sand racers are keen to beat my speed, so we feel obliged to defend our record and push the speed higher again. Eisenberg's remarkable success in land speed racing opened up new opportunities, propelling him into the world of television as both a presenter and racer in the adrenaline-charged TV series Speed Freaks. In this captivating series that aired in 2019, Eisenberg faced his most formidable challenge yet, the ambitious quest to shatter the British land speed record, all while engineering the car himself, a 1200 horsepower Porsche 911 Turbo. Eisenberg's unwavering thirst for speed and his relentless pursuit of the land speed record make for mesmerizing viewing. In May 2019, Eisenberg fulfilled his goal of the fastest ever wheel-driven vehicle at Pendine Sands. With speed soaring beyond an incredible 210 miles per hour, he became the only person in history to hold records at over 200 miles per hour on sand on both two wheels and four. In the early months of 2019, Eisenberg had started another ambitious project, the development of the world's fastest electric motorbike. He rallied his Mad Max race team and formed a close partnership with PhD students from Nottingham University. Together, they meticulously crafted a one-of-a-kind machine from the ground up. In September 2019, Eisenberg rode the electric motorbike to secure three world FIM records and one ACU British record establishing it as the fastest unfaired electric motorbike globally. His passion for education led him taking his turbine motorcycle to schools and colleges. His intention was to ignite the spark of inspiration in young minds, encouraging them to challenge conventional wisdom and instilling the belief that they could achieve anything with the right mindset, attitude, and determination. Little did he know the fate that awaited him. In 2020, Eisenberg set his sights on another audacious goal, breaking the British land speed record in a Porsche 911 Turbo. But again, he wasn't on a closed racetrack. He chose the impressive setting of Elvington Airfield, where speeds in excess of 250 miles per hour were on the line. As the day of reckoning arrived, Eisenberg climbed into his Porsche, ready to face the challenge head on. The countdown began and he accelerated down the runway, faster and faster, but then disaster struck. In the midst of this high-speed run, the Porsche suddenly veered off course. Panic ensued as the vehicle flipped and rolled, engulfed in a fiery inferno. Zeff Eisenberg was trapped inside, and every second counted. The emergency response team rushed to the scene, battling the flames to free him. It was a race against time, a life-and-death struggle, and the team watched in horror as Eisenberg fought for his survival. Graham and David, two race marshals, were parked by the runway in a van to observe the record attempt. Graham said, The car looked smooth and stable as it passed us and set off at around 80 miles per hour. I saw the parachute deployed and the rear end of the car appeared to lift and go right as if air had got under the car. Eisenberg tried to correct by steering left, but the car hit the grass. In my opinion, he got the braking and parachute sequence wrong. 
He has applied the brakes before the parachute has deployed. Graham believed that when the chute was pulled, the back of the car went light. Without the parachute fully open, there was nothing to stop the car from spinning. The car then hit the grass with Graham recalling, There was lots of dust and debris in the air. It is difficult to say how many rolls the car did because it happened so fast. Both Dave and I jumped from the van grabbing a fire extinguisher. We ran towards the vehicle which was on fire and within seconds, the safety ambulance arrived. The modified Porsche was fitted with a parachute which required Eisenberg to take his left hand off the steering wheel to deploy it using a lever. An alternative method was to deploy a button mounted on the steering wheel, but Eisenberg had insisted on activating it using a handle. Michael Hausman, who fitted the parachute, said Eisenberg was one of those characters who would not be told. Once he had something in his head, he would not be swayed. The movement to push the lever forward and release the parachute was quite substantial, according to Steve Gardner, who was a collision investigator for North Yorkshire Police at the time. Footage from inside the car also showed a minimal but noticeable twitch on the steering wheel in the seconds before he lost control, Gardner added. Additionally, Eisenberg had been told he must deploy the parachute before braking, otherwise the weight of the vehicle would be transferred forward and the rear would be lifted off the ground, and he used the chute several times that day without incident. However, video footage shows that when he was attempting the fastest mile with a flying start, he applied the brakes before the parachute was deployed. The vehicle was then lifted up into the air and it flipped onto its roof. Jamie Champkin from Motorsport UK said the forces involved in the crash were huge and could not have been survived. The car became airborne very quickly. It traveled 1,683 feet before coming to a rest. The minute it is in the air, there's no friction, apart from air friction, to restrain its speed in any way. He added, our estimates were it was probably still doing 150 miles per hour, maybe 250 miles per hour, but it hit the ground and our very basic calculations would suggest an impact force may be as high as 37,000 pounds or 218 times Eisenberg's body weight. This incident was not survivable in that context. And that was right, Eisenberg didn't survive the horrifying crash. Family members expressed concerns about whether Eisenberg was correctly strapped into the Porsche using a six-point harness, which was attached to the car in five places. Evidence was heard that the driver's safety harness crotch straps became detached from the car due to the impact when the car overturned. But the pathologist who conducted the post-mortem examination found it would have had little or no effect because of the force involved. Eisenberg carried out 10 runs of the airfield that day with analysis of the vehicle finding no faults in the brakes, tires, or aerodynamics. He had effectively deployed the parachute multiple times earlier in the day, achieving speeds of up to 228 miles per hour before embarking on his last run at 4.25 p.m. In the autopsy report, coroner Jonathan Heath ruled that Zeph Eisenberg's death was the result of misadventure, as it was the unintended consequence of his actions. The cause of his death was multiple traumatic injuries he suffered when he lost control of the motor car he was driving at approximately 244 miles per hour during a national speed record attempt, he added. Zeph Eisenberg died at the age of 47. Eisenberg's last Facebook post shows his Mad Max 1200 horsepower Porsche car refueling on Wednesday with the caption, late night testing for the next stage of madness. Following his death, Eisenberg's family described him as a true genius with unique talents. They said he injected his positivity into everyone he came into contact with. His loving partner, Morella D'Antonio, and their two children, and Eisenberg's parents and four siblings, all adored him and followed his progress with great admiration. Zeph Eisenberg set more than 90 speed records on two and four wheels. 